much that. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm Sandy Kurtz, and I am with the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League. And um, I just I wanted to follow up a little bit on Mr. Safer's talk about uh, earthquake seismic issues. Today, March 26, Athens was at the epicenter of a 2.8 magnitude earthquake. I don't. I know that's not big, and as far as I know, nobody suffered catastrophically. But still, it reminds us that Watts Bar is is not immune to those disastrous weather impacts. So I, I just wanted to reiterate that, that um, I'm most pleased to hear all of the inspections that are going on, thank you very much, and, and to TVA for really attending to the safety inside the plant. But I really am concerned more about uh, the outside of the plant, what happens, what happens uh, when either an accident occurs or really in daily daily impacts of, from venting and uh, emissions, uh, environmental impacts uh, to the water, uh, the, the thermal impacts, the aquatic species impact, and, and earlier today Jesse and I talked about the environmental impact statement and the supplement that has been completed, but I, I feel that it was not uh, adequate to address, address the issues because the uh, it did not in, it, it did not include the scope that uh, would address climate change impacts and, and uh, probabilities in the future and and that seems really important as Mr. Saber was talking about um, we are we are in for more catastrophic weather events and and I think that that needs to really be addressed before any license is is given it seems also outside the scope of the licensing to to have to address this environmental impact, and I think that really uh, that should come that should come first. The um, other thing that I, I wanted to uh, mention to you what was that the NRC Commission actually had a study published in 2010. I don't know if this is the one you were referring to earlier, but it estimated the risk each year of an earthquake intense enough to cause core damage to the reactor at Watts Bar was one in 27,778. That might be a big number, but I'd be far more happy if it was one in a million. It, it, that actually seems kind of, kind of a, low, uh, a low number for us to be risking, or high risk. Um, and, and then the, the environmental impact statement also said that there is concluded that there's no significant impact to, um, to the environment when, when you operate a second nuclear reactor. That seems pretty unbelievable to me. Wouldn't it be twice as much? And I guess that's the question that I'm asking you. Isn't it, wouldn't it be twice as much environmental impact if you're running two reactors instead of one? More to air emissions and more to water uh, water and, and thermal heat in, in the water. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Let me, let, me, let me take on the issue about climate change. There was a point I wanted to make when Don was up there and I, I failed to do that. And then maybe Jesse can talk a little bit about the environmental impact um, statement. Um, so one of the things that, that um, in terms of a, a, a key lesson learned out of, out of Fukushima was the unpredictability of what Mother Nature may do to us. All right. Uh, Don made a very good point about you know uh, the Earth is still changing. You know, is there things going on that are increasing the seismic risk in certain parts of the world or, or not? And, and clearly, you know, what's going on underneath the surface of the Earth is indeed changing more so in some areas than others. And, and that's why, for example. Part of the world like Japan is so susceptible to these large earthquakes because we do know that things like tectonic plate shifting and things like that are occurring on a much more frequent and, and dramatic basis in that part of the world. Uh, but that being said, um, our, our primary effort relative to environmental impacts coming out of Fukushima is focusing on seismic and flooding risk. Okay, but that doesn't mean that that's not the whole suite of, of environmental things that we want to make sure that we look at 
or assess. And Gretel, I see you're having trouble hearing. So let me grab another mic. How about that one? Yeah. That's it. Is that good? All right. So, uh, um, so relative to environmental impacts, um, we have as additional work on our plate post Fukushima is to do assessments of other environmental hazards as well as the seismic and flooding. But we wanted to focus our attention and our resources on the things that were most salient at this point in time. But we do have a commitment to the commission that we will evaluate other types of things like winds and, and ice storms and things like that. So that's number, the first point I want to make. The second point is that um, we have committed to the commission to evaluate the efficacy of a periodic um, requirement for licensees to go back and look at protection of their plant relative to any changes in um, uh, things like seismicity or you know um, predicted uh, level changes in the ocean and things like that. And so that's something that we still again owe the commission a proposal on how we might do that in the future. So it's not going to be a near-term thing because we still have several more years of getting through all the Tier 1 um, post-Fukushima actions. But we do have, and we're already starting to think about how we might frame that issue for the Commission and get Commission direction on what to do relative to uh, requiring licensees to do a periodic assessment and, you know, and not wait for some event to happen but as new information comes out. And I, I will say, um, and so, for example, when I talked about our, our response to the Central Eastern United States a seismic study by USGS, the agency does react to and respond to information that comes out of, of research organizations and otherwise that have potential implications for plants relative to environmental impacts. And that was an example of one where we were fully engaged in moving out and, and having industry evaluate that when Fukushima occurred. So um, that kind of dialogue will be integrated into that, um, that paper that will ultimately send the commission. But that's, again, several years down the road. So, and do you want to address the, no, I think you, the environmental? Oh, the environmental. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yes, it was a good discussion that I had with you uh, earlier at the end uh, uh, with uh, respect to the environmental impact statement. Uh, uh, the NRC does, uh, you know, utilize the, uh, uh, the regulations that we have in place in looking at the environmental impacts uh, to the, uh, that the site may have, uh, not only to the environment, but uh, to the, uh, the, uh, the radiation impacts uh, to the members of the public uh, as well. And uh, there is a uh, whole uh, review process that we go through and it ultimately ends up in an environmental impact statement. I uh, thank you for bringing up some of these uh, you know, questions that, uh, that you do have with respect to you know, climate change and where uh, uh, and your concern with that. And uh, you know, I just want to uh, encourage you to uh, participate as uh, the commission, or as, uh, like Bill said, uh, the boat paper going up, or I'm sorry, uh, the information going up on uh, what the agency would like to do with climate change to participate in those uh, public engagements. Uh, and that helps with uh, uh, us hearing uh, your thoughts and, and anyone's thoughts uh, as you uh, follow this uh, through. So. Okay, we have uh, one more question that came from somebody on the webinar who couldn't um, use the phone line. Uh, it's our fault. Sorry for the technical difficulties. This question is from Sarah Barzak. Um, she's with the Southern Alliance of Clean Energy, and I'm going to read her question. Can the NRC clearly explain why post-Fukushima seismic investigations won't be completed until after 2017, which is after the operating license is expected to be issued, especially since the ground motion for Watts Bar 2 is greater than the, the design basis that was established for the reactor? Why not address this during licensing versus after the fact when the public's participation is limited? 
This reactor has been in construction for over 40 years. What's the rush? So thanks for your question, Sarah. Hopefully you can hear, hear the response. Of course, we've had a lot of discussion already tonight about seismic and, and, and its implications. I'll point out a couple of things. Um, uh, the commission, when it provided its direction to the staff relative to the licensing of Watts Bar Unit 2 um, considerations, was that it would be done to the same design basis as Watts Bar Unit 1. And so that's the guidance that we've gotten from the commission. The commission has not provided any guidance to the contrary. Uh, and we've had several discussions tonight about, um, you know, for example, why the, uh, the staff believes that, you know, uh, getting, for example, seismic PRAs from those licensees that, that need to provide a seismic PRA and receiving those in 2017 is appropriate from a safety perspective. Um, we talked about that in, in light of the North Anna event. Uh, we talked about that in, in our discussions related to um, um, Watts Bar's efforts relative to their seismic evaluations and what they've done in the interim and, and um, you know, the whole issue about the robustness. I did want to mention that um, in, in the engineering world, particularly engineering design world, there is a lot of emphasis on margin and conservatism. Right, and if you go back to the 60s and 70s in particular, where there were not, there was not as much uh, substantive computational uh, capabilities like um, like Mr. Woody talked about with Oak Ridge with their supercomputer and so on, that there was always a tremendous amount of margin and conservatism that was put into not only design calculations but also construction and. The recognition and awareness of that is a large part of what gives us a, a strong level of confidence in the robustness of um, the current fleet of operating reactors relative to uh, the capability to withstand seismic events even above uh, the current safe shutdown earthquake that the design basis may actually uh, be. Um, she actually has a follow-up question, and we'll squeeze that in. This will be the, the last question, I promise. Um, thank you, Mr. Skaggs, for supporting the NRC in terms of this comment that the NRC inspections and activities have not hampered TVA schedule. Doing things correctly is what is most important. Political pressure is very high right now. The Tennessee State Senate Resolution 92, for instance, by sponsors uh, Yeager and McNally, which encourages the NRC to support TVA's license application, along with comments from influential members of Congress. It is very imperative that the safety of the community is number one, not politics. Um, I know that it's exciting to say that the first reactor of the 21st century, uh, but as John Safer coined, Watts Bar 2 is really the last old reactor of the 20th century. Fukushima lessons learned need to be considered now, not after licensing. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if I heard a question or if that was more of a comment. It was more of a comment. Okay. 